I don't know what happened. Something happened. Good day, good day, good day. How you doing? How are you, Linnell? How you doing today? I'm fine. Today, uh, hopefully we'll get through <clears throat> everything. Good day again. Welcome to another Minor Adjustments program via Facebook Live. My name is Michael Mickey Williams Jr. And that's... Uh, Lernell. <laughs> so again, you know, before we get into it, we are um, trying something new uh, just to get people more engaged in the Minor Adjustments program. Um, again, I'm going to go through a few things before we start for today's lesson. Uh, let's see. Um, first thing I want to do is say God bless you to everybody, and hopefully we'll be able to give people some encouragement, encouragement words of encouragement, and things like that. Today our subject is on um, surrender. Actually, we we on Mind Adjustment Periscope at the same time as that we on Facebook Live. So we're trying to expand and get Mind Adjustments out there more to more audience to understand what we do. How you doing, uh, Brother Core? How you doing, cuz? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. One of the things I wanted to go over is my first book is... Pushed out the crack house into God's house. How to allow your past to push you into your destiny. Pushed out the crack house into God's house. How to allow your past to push you into your destiny. If anybody uh, is interested in finding out different ways to allow your past to push you into your destiny. Just get this first book called Pushed Out the Crack House into God's House. How to Allow Your Past to Push You into Destiny. It's my first book. Where I tell you about my testimony of how far I cam came, how far God brought me up until this point. My second book, Lynette, I don't know if she know this, but I'm going to tell her, is The 28 Sermons You Have to Hear. My second book is The 28 Sermons You Have to Hear. This book is a great book also for individuals who want to read and discover different pathways that God will call them to go down. The 28 Sermons You Have to Hear is a book that was written in Ecclesiastics chapter 3 where it says, Is the time for this? Is the time for that? Is the time for this? Is the time for that? That's the actually, the 28 sermons are actually the 28 things that God said it's a time for. All right, what's next? My next book is The Journey is Too Great for You. The Journey is Too Great for You. This book is something to, to encourage individuals who may be going through something at a certain period of time in their life and they might not know what's really going on. And this is a book to encourage them to let them know that the journey is too great for you. You will need a team. You will need to build on having a team. This is my third book. How you doing, Linnell? <laughs> my fourth book is God Changed Your Name. This is a great book to help people experience their identity. This is when people keep trying to tell you you're one person or hold you to who you used to be. This book lets you know that you're no longer the individual that you used to be because God changed your name. You need to get this book too also. This is my fourth book. The other book is the Minor Adjustment Workbook, which we've been doing today. We'll be going over the Minor Adjustments Workbook, which we've been going through every Friday at 6 p.m. We've been going through this book, and hopefully you'll be able to tune in every week for the next, well, we got four, uh, five more weeks mm -hmm. on Friday at 6 p.m., but that's the Minor Adjustment Workbook. I'm going through all my books because a lot of people ask me what kind of books I wrote or uh, how do you get. You can go to minoradjustments.org and look at my author page to order all my books. This fifth book or sixth book, fifth book is I'm a believer. I am who I am. 
I'm a believer. I am who I am. And this is just something that's inspired to let individuals know that you can't look at what other people are doing or what other people don't get or receive. Because if you are a believer, you will receive favor. You get favor from God. I'm a believer. I am what I am. <laughs> Seventh book is. Bam. Come over to the other side of the cross. This book was inspired because a lot of individuals was living on the wrong side of the cross. So this book was inspired to tell individuals, stop living about the past. Live for the future. Don't live off your past. Live for what's ahead of you. So this one is to come over to the other side of the cross. My eighth book and final book is my purpose is greater than my struggles. My purpose is greater than my struggle. This book is written all according to purpose. It's the only thing it has in here is stuff that's directed to getting individuals to strive after and hunger after purpose. It gives you a breakdown of certain things that I did in my life to achieve or to get to where I am today in regards to my purpose from God. So this one, my purpose is greater than my struggle. Now, with that said, let's get, it started. let's get started. All right. Today is the Mind Adjustment Program, week three, where we'll be doing surrender. And again, minor, we're doing a synopsis. Minor Adjustments is dedicated to preventing and reducing crime. His, our primary purpose is to teach men or women how to make the minor adjustments that are necessary in their lives, which will allow them to obtain and maintain a productive lifestyle after incarceration and or rehabilitation. The word obtain means to come into the possession of something, and the word maintain means to keep it in existence. Most individuals who struggle with a, any type of mood, mind, alternate substances always put more effort on getting off of whatever drug it is. But the, to, get, to obtain your sobriety is easy. Your challenge is to maintain it. To attain your freedom, that's easy. Your challenge is to maintain it. When you are sentenced to a crime, let's say, the judge gives you a certain amount of time that you have to do for the crime. So it's no need for you to try to obtain your freedom. When you do that time, you're gonna get free. <laughs> then you're going to get free. But the thing that a lot of individuals are doing that they have to make minor adjustments is, they're putting a lot of effort and energy on getting off drugs. And they're putting a lot of efforts and emphasis on getting out of jail. But to attain your freedom is easy. The challenge is to maintain it. Again, the word obtain means to come into the possession of something. And the word maintain means to keep it in existence. When you are off drugs or when you get freedom, your challenge from that point forward is to accumulate the necessary coping skills or the relapse prevention skills to maintain the freedom that you just obtained from when you first got it. Mm. So today, Minor Adjustments is a program, is an eight-week program that we go into different facilities because we don't have our own facility yet. So right now we go in two facilities and run the minor adjustment program. It's an eight-week program. We go in each week, and every week we do something different. We'll do something um, weekly. Uh, we go to a different subject each week, and at the end of the eight weeks, we have a graduation. At the end of the graduation, the individuals who took the program will receive a certificate, with their name on it, the program director's name on it, and of course one of our names on it. And they also will receive a minor adjustments bracelet which says anywhere but backwards, which is our motto. Anywhere but backwards. That that motto came from a scripture or a Bible verse that I read years ago, and it's Jeremiah 7:24, and it says, Yet they did not obey and incline their ear to me, but they followed the counsel and the dictates of their own hearts, and they kept going backwards instead of forward. So we teach individuals that you must go 
anywhere but backwards. No matter what happens, you must be convinced in your mind that you must go anywhere but backwards. So that's our motto. And with that, we're going to get into today's topic, which is surrender, the key to victory. That is a phrase or term that I actually got from America's Keswick County of Mercy, Mr. Chaplain Jim Freed. He coined that phrase, surrender the key to victory. And when I was in the rehabilitation, the County of Mercy at uh, close to Times River, that phrase would never leave me. Surrender the key to victory. Surrender key to victory. So I love that phrase and I kept it and I'm giving him credit for that phrase that he has uh, wrote in his uh, most of his work. So this today we're talking about surrender. And when we go do the program each week, we have an expectation. Today, our expectation for this particular topic is everyone will realize that they can't change the system. I'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Everyone will realize that they can't change the system. Everyone will realize that they can't change the system. It says, surrender the key to the victory. When two armies are at war and one of the army wants to give up because they realize that they are defeated, they wave a white flag. Or when a boxer is taking the beating in the ring and the corner wants to stop the fight, they throw in the white towel. In this case, meaning your life, you are the ones with the white flag or the towel in your hand and you and only you can have the power to wave it or throw it in and that's called surrender and surrendering is the key to your victory many individuals who have a criminal struggle with criminal lifestyle or struggle with some type of gambling or struggle with some type of uh, uh, addiction they possess the necessary thing that they need to surrender and what they need to surrender is they have their lies right in their hand they must throw their towel in just like that bite boxer's corner see his fighter taking a beating he gonna throw the towel in and when the enemy or you see in the army and someone's defeated and they waving the white flag in your case meaning in your life you and only you have to throw in the towel and that's called surrender and what I was talking about, everyone will realize that they can't change the system. If you ever realize when you order something online, if you order something online, you punch in your credit card information to order whatever you need online, the information goes in, you place your order. If you come back to that computer the next day, put your information in the computer to try to order something, normally when you start typing in your name, what you put in last, last will appear. And what that is doing is the system is trying to predict that you're going to use the exact same information <laughs> that you used the last, last time. Mm -hmm. So what the system is doing, that's called autofill. The system is trying, trying to predict that you are going to use the same information that you used the last time. But in order for you to change it, you will have to change it manually. Right? Other than going to cookies. But don't get too deep on me. Keep it simple. But you have to change it manually. Why I'm saying that? Because a lot of individuals are caught up in the system. And the system is simply predicting that you're going to do the same thing you did the last time. But if you change some ways, change the way you used to do things, then obviously they won't be able to predict that you're going to commit that crime that you committed the last time. But you must surrender to the fact that you have to make some minor adjustment. The autofill predicts or tries to predict that you're going to use the same information and you have to change the information that you're feeding the system. Mm -hmm. If you keep on doing the same thing, you're going to keep on getting the same thing out. Mm 
In order for you to get to where you're trying to go, you must surrender. And surrender is the key to your victory. Not only drugs, there's some people who are eating certain foods that they're not supposed to eat according to what the doctor told them. But they still keep eating the same type of meat that the doctor told them is hurting them. They have to surrender. And surrender is the key to their victory. Let me see. Uh... One second. How you doing, Major? He graduated. Major graduated from the Mind Adjustment Program, too. How you mm-hmm. doing? Right there is a good time to ask him the question, what's keeping you from surrendering? What or who has you not surrendering? What or who has you not surrendered? That's a question. So you can tell me the answer on the screen. What or who has you not surrendering the word surrender means to give up abandon relinquish or just let go Mm -hmm. it means to give up abandon relinquish or to just let go again we're just doing a minor adjustments program for via facebook live and periscope at the same time and we're doing it each week we're going to do something on a different subject today the subject is surrender the key to your victory go ahead no yeah, ask the question who or what has you not surrendering Something has you to not surrender into, again, it's not just about drugs and alcohol or criminal lifestyle. Some people have an issue with gambling, and it's something that's not stopping them from surrendering to that same issue. Who or what has you not surrendering? Um, a tug of war. I wrote right here is that God is trying to take this life away from you, and you are fighting him to keep it. You in a tug of war. God's trying to take the bad life from you. And it's like you at a tug of war with him. Like, no, I want to keep it. But it's not really producing any good positive fruit. And it's like you at a tug of war. And one day I had a vision and I seen myself with pulling my life, the old life, to me. And it was like God was trying to take me out of the life. And I didn't even realize that I had to surrender to that same thing. Well, if you go back to the definition of surrender, and it says to give up, abandon, relinquish, or just let go. To me, um, a lot of times when it comes to surrender, it's not the giving up because you give up something. Yeah. A lot of times we say, I quit or I give up. And in order for you to have this thing, you got to let this thing go. So it's not even the letting go. It's the relinquishing that people have a hard time with yeah because you feel like someone's taking the power from you <laughs> it, it's hard to relinquish it that that's that's just my take yeah what's up nick colony of mercy that's nick your girl with the white bands <laughs> let's see what's the hardest another question somebody answer it on the screen what's the hardest area for you to surrender what's the hardest area for you to surrender what's the hardest area for you to surrender wow that's a powerful question or what's the hardest area for you to change you see that surrender has uh, after surrender is a word change next to there in parentheses in my book it says what's the hardest area for you to surrender or change change must be structured watch this Change must be structured. Old patterns get reinforced Mm -hmm. unless a new discipline is introduced to override the old pattern. Change must be structured. If you ever deal with anything where you're trying to change, notice how much you fight against structure. Mm -hmm. When I, oh man, listen, when, when you're trying to lose weight, change must be structured. When you're trying to lose weight, you have yourself on this particular diet and you probably want to go get this cheeseburger with this bacon and you want to deviate from the diet. But change, if you're really trying to change, it must be structured. Surrender is the key to the victory. And what's the hardest area for you to surrender? But you have to remember that change must be structured. Why? Because old patterns get reinforced 
unless a new discipline is introduced to override the old pattern. Listen to me. Old patterns get reinforced unless a new discipline is introduced to your mind to override the old pattern. My old way of living was 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 introduced to my spirituality. Once my spirituality foundation, my brain got a head, got a hold of what my new foundation was, my old pattern changed. So old patterns get reinforced unless a new discipline is introduced to override the old pattern. So I went from hanging on the street and doing drugs and committing crime every day to getting up, praying and reading my Bible every day. So my new discipline overrode my old pattern. And that's surrender, the key to your victory. And that's the minor adjustments that you have to make. It's just like setting your uh, GPS in your car. In my car, you know, when I put the directions in, it asked me routes. It asked me, do I want to use highways? Yeah. Do I want to avoid tolls? Do I want all tolls? <laughs> and whatever route I set it on, no matter what address I put in there, it's going to follow the route that I set it on. Good God. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I told her that, though. But listen, <laughs> it's going to follow. It's going to follow whatever. the route. So, so if I don't want to pay tolls, I got to change that route. Yeah, come on. If you don't want to pay, that's good. That's good. Because old patterns get reinforced unless new disciplines are introduced to override the old pattern. Mm -hmm. Again, that's um, what's the hardest area for you to change what's the hardest area for you to surrender today mm -hmm. we're talking about surrendering which is the key to victory a phrase that i coined from um chaplain jim free from america keswick county the mercy what's the hardest area for you to surrender we're talking about surrendering surrendering and a lot of individuals have to narrow down what's the hardest area for me to surrender and think about it. Don't always think of that area as being necessarily a thing. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying, the hardest thing for me to give up is these cigarettes. The hardest thing for me to give up is this beer. Don't necessarily think of it as a thing or a place or a person, something physical or tangible. It could be something else. Like my hardest thing was giving up um, how I felt about issues, like things that had happened to me. It was my right to be angry about those things. It was my right to hold on to that. You've done enough. So you telling me to let it go or forget about it and move on. I held on tighter because you already did what you did to me. Yeah. And now you're trying to control how I feel about That's it. True. <laughs> so sometimes it's not necessary something tangible. What you're holding on to that's not tangible could be causing you to take on those tangible things as an escape as far as drinking, um, Use, utilizing um, people or um, smoking, you know, it could be something like that. True. That's good. What's up, Mr. Sean McDaniels? That's Sean. It says, okay, what's the hard, again, what's the hardest area for you to surrender? The next bullet question is, why? <laughs> three words, three letters. Why? Why is that the hardest area for you to surrender? These, again, these are questions I'm reading out of the Minor Adjustments Workbook. Again, Minor Adjustments is a program that my wife and I created. It's an eight weeks course. If you work in a facility, we connect with the program directors and we come in and we teach a subject each week at the end of the eight weeks we have a graduation with whoever we had took through the program they receive a certificate they receive the anywhere but backwards uh bracelet after that um then we just have a nice graduation and hopefully we will encourage some of the individuals who went through the program to become uh, facilitators and then we take those same individuals who were once destroying their community and now we take those individuals and put them back into their communities and help build up the community we no longer want people to tear down communities we want to raise up individuals and try to empower and instill and encourage them to go back into their communities communities mm -hmm. and build their communities up where our kids and grandkids have to live we once were tearing it down but now we want to try to instill individuals to build it up and minor adjustments again is that our mission is 
We are dedicated to preventing and reducing crime. Our primary purpose is to teach men or women how to make the minor adjustments that are necessary for their lives, which will allow them to obtain and maintain a productive lifestyle after incarceration and or rehabilitation. Our motto is anywhere but backwards. We got that from the Bible verse Jeremiah 7:24 and it says, "Yet they did not obey and incline their ear to me, but they followed the counsel of their own hearts and they kept going backwards instead of forward." And we just took that and said, "You know what? We going to go anywhere but backwards. And from that point forward, that's what we've been doing. And now we want to try to encourage other individuals to do it again. Today we're talking about surrender. And every week on Friday for the next five weeks, we will go through the book. And next week we will be talking about visualizing. I love talking about vision. I'm a visionary. I see things ahead before it get there. I see it. So when it comes, I'm like, it's no surprise, really. I already, I was already there. <laughs> um... The next question is, have you ever thought about surrendering? Have you ever thought about surrendering? That's a good question that individuals should ask themselves. Have you ever thought about surrendering? Because some individuals may never thought about even surrendering certain things. And like my wife said, it don't always have to be things. It might be a way you used to do stuff. Um, you know what I mean? You might be the way you carry yourself or something like it that. It could be a route. Um, I remember I interned at um, Seabrook House. And Seabrook House has, they have sidewalks. And the sidewalks, they go straight, left, right. But they have different buildings. So um, what happened is they tell everybody to stay on the sidewalk, stay mm -hmm. on the path. A lot of times the clients cut through the grass. <laughs> well, this was years ago. I haven't been know. here in a while. But they cut through the grass because you can get there quicker. And what I tried to explain to them, and I don't know if this was a plan, but Seabrook House is not something they told me. But what I explained to them, that's how you get in certain situations. You end up going back to your old way because you try to take the shortcut. Wow. Sometimes <laughs> your route is just to go a different way. And if that way is longer... But it'll save you some headache. Yeah, true. <laughs> Try to cut, deviate in the course. Stay on it. Get, don't step on the grass. Because you know if taking you, if you take this shortcut to work, but you know you got to go past this liquor store and your struggle is mm -hmm. liquor, take a longer route. Take a longer route. How you doing, Jane? It says, do a part of you want to truly surrender? Do a part of you want to truly surrender? Again, it, it can be something with your diet. It can be something with your health, knowing that your body uh, uh, is not acting right. And, you know, you feel some type of way. And, you know, listen, I really have to get down to this because my body is hurting. My back is hurting. And that recently happened to me. I just was getting out of the bed and my back was hurting. And I said, something's not right. I'm going to have to get on one of her diets. So I said, I'm going to have to start eating like, I'm going to have to start eating like her, first of all. And, you know, that was something that I had to surrender to because I liked it. I, when I was younger, when I was younger, I was able to eat whatever I want, whenever I wanted. And I, my metabolism, you would, would just do what it do. And I was good, physically fit, good. But now that I'm older, I'm thinking like I got the old mindset, like, no, you can't do that. Now you're going to have to be mindful. So I had to surrender to the fact that, yeah, my back hurting because I'm not eating right and I'm not doing this. But thank God I got her right here because, you know, she got me apples and all that stuff. But anyway, but I had to, what I'm saying, I had to surrender to the fact that if I wanted something to change in my life physically, that I had to change my diet. I had to change. I couldn't just leave work and shoot to the uh, store and go get burgers all the time. Dinner, <laughs> burgers for dinner. Y'all got burgers at 6 o'clock? Let me get a burger. So, you know, I, that's my issue, you know, so I had to surrender to that. But have you ever thought about surrendering? Have you ever thought about surrendering? And that was the question. The next one is, do a part of you want to truly surrender? Do a part of you want to truly surrender? These questions, again, are questions that's in the book. Each client will have this book, and they will answer these questions by themselves or then when they come to group if they want to share it they don't have to share it because each client will have a different answer 
to 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 the question but this questions are written they were written when i wrote this book somebody once asked me said when i read this book it seemed like you wrote it from when you were in away i wasn't actually away but that's exactly how i wrote it when i was writing it like as i was actually going through something at that particular time and these were the questions that came to my spirit and i put them in the book to god be the glory do, do does a part of you want to truly surrender Some people can think, what's the difference in asking, do you want to surrender? Be, and the reason we put that word truly, truly means without no other cause, there's, there's no other reason you, you just really want to change. You want to just give this up. Because some people surrender temporarily. Mm. And they know that. <laughs> Their whole intentions yeah. is to surrender or, <laughs> or fall back. Just so they can obtain something else. Yeah. This question wants to know if you really want to surrender your old way for a new way. Yeah. Not surrender certain things temporarily Temporary. to obtain what you want yeah, from whomever yeah. or wherever. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I used to do that to her. She didn't know. I would just, <laughs> I, I would, I would do. Hey, what's up, Pastor Roman? I, I would tell her, you know, yeah, I really wanted to change, but I really just wanted to come back in the house because I was broke. So I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna change my life. I. I'm done. I, I quit. I don't want to do it no more. But I just really wanted to get back in. That's basically called behavior modification. I wasn't really transformed. I was just modifying my behavior to get what I want. Just like she said, that sometimes people will surrender just to obtain something they want. But this type of level where you need to go and where you're trying to go, it can't be a behavior modification. You have to surrender, surrender to a transformation. When you just modify the behavior, Behavior, you will repeat it easily but when you transform the behavior is beneath you but you have to surrender to the process and, the mo and surrender is the key to your victory and I and, and she's so right because some people will surrender just to obtain something and I will remember being in church sometimes crying out using actively using but go to the author and ball out with tears ah I surrender I get up as soon as I got out of church <laughs> <laughs> he was there. I was going, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I surrendered, though, to the process, and the process uh, came around and blessed me. The next question is, do you know when you're defeated? Hi, Pastor Roman. Do you know when you're defeated? The question in the books, again, are simply to make the, the client or whoever is taking the minor adjustments <laughs> program Think. Get them to think. Because if an individual do not know when they are defeated, it's easy to go back to an old lifestyle, a bad lifestyle. When you know you are defeated, you're not going to play with it too much. But if you keep thinking you're winning, like uh, like the saying, um, drug abuse, like we really was uh, uh, the drugs, we was really abusing the drugs. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Drugs was abusing us. And that part has to come. You have to get the mindset that, do you know when you defeated? Because it was plenty of times when I was living the life that I used to live when I was looking physically a hot mess. But you couldn't tell me I wasn't smooth. <laughs> you couldn't tell me I ain't still look like I did when I was 19 and 20 because I did not know that I was defeated. And if the question is, do you know when you are defeated? And when you know you are defeated, you no longer look no other way. You just realize that you have to change. And I used to just think, you know, I would tell her, look, I, I, I look, I look good. I look physically good. But, but I, I didn't. <laughs> but I was a hot mess because I did not know that I was defeated. And that defeat brought me to my knees. It humbled me because the time when I was um, on the corner and she kept riding, she never stopped. And the reason why she didn't stop is because is because my physical features had changed and my wife didn't even recognize me because I was so messed up on drugs and running the streets that she didn't even physically recognize her own husband and she drove right past me. But when I sat there and seen that experience that happened, then I knew that I was defeated. So when, do you know, again, the question is, do you know when you, you are, are defeated. defeated? Do you know? 
the next page again we doing surrender the key to victory from the um minor adjustments um workbook that we do for a minor adjustments is the eight week course that we do we go into the institutions and rehabilitation centers and try to inspire individuals to do different things and it says so many people that I encounter each day struggle with the idea of surrender surrendering it is almost as if we have developed barriers around our hearts that keep the world at an emotional distance recognizing those obstacles recognizing those obstacles that stand in your way is the first steps towards strong faith that you can surrender one of the key obstacles pay attention to surrendering is pride one of the key obstacles to surrendering is pride we may not all admit this but all of us have this in abundance the good news is there is a known cure called humility pride is a cure for pride and it's called humility without a doubt it will take a humble person to surrender one bad lifestyle for a better lifestyle most people don't surrender and the reason why most people don't surrender one bad lifestyle for a better lifestyle is because of pride because pride will not allow them to say you know i really thought i had it all together but i really don't but humility is the known cure for pride is it'll take a humble person to surrender one bad lifestyle for a better lifestyle one pa- one it will take a humble person to surrender one bad lifestyle for a better lifestyle if you think about when a doctor most individuals have to I'm talking about surrender when a doctor prescribes a patient medication mm-hmm. the doctor prescribes the medication with instructions excuse me the doctor will prescribe medications when he prescribed the medication the doctor gives the patient instructions on how to take the medication Mm -hmm. if you go home and take the medication outside the prescription instructions Mm -hmm. you can't go back to the doctor and tell the doctor that the that the that the medication didn't work See, and surrendering is the medication that we prescribe to you. If you don't surrender, you can't come back and say that the medication don't work. <laughs> don't work. Surrender is the medication. And uh, and one of the reasons, the main reasons why most individuals don't surrender a bad lifestyle for a better lifestyle is pride. But humility is the cure for pride and let's say something else about medication and surrendering the doctor gives you medication there's not any medications that i can think of right now well not too many there's a couple that you're just going to take one time he might give it to you for a succession of days that's the same thing with surrender sometimes in some instances it can happen that first time you surrender but other times you may have to surrender every day or you may have to surrender that morning and before you go to bed again at night, you may have to surrender all over again. That's true. Next, let's see. Page 32. Again, we going through the minor adjustments workbook. This is week three. Surrender and minor adjustments. I'm going to keep saying it because I, people learn from repetition. You should have mm-hmm. been here. We did that week one, I think. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, People learn from repetition and mind adjustments is the eight week program that we go and each week we teach something different is different subjects at the the end of the eight weeks we have a graduation after the graduation the people get certificates bracelets and we eat and fellowship things like that if anybody would like to have the mind adjustments program in their facility or even in their church who have a a stronghold ministry at your church we also can do the mind adjustments there just contact us or go to mind adjustments website at minoradjustments.org and you could just or email us at minor adjustments 2013 at gmail.com all right unit two part two surrender the key to victory it says 
We could divide our troubles and uh, our difficulties into three groups. One, physical problems. Two, difficulties caused by our own mistakes or by intentional or unintentional actions of others. And three, spiritual attacks from the outside. Troubles are common to all, whether we face trials from spiritual attacks or battles with our own human weaknesses or physical problems, like I was talking about. We all have <laughs> trouble. We all, hey, Kiana, you late. Hey, we all have trouble. Not to speak of the mistakes that we make or suffering from the effects of the mistakes of others and so on. No matter what problems you face, always remember that there is a key to victory. There is a key to victory. We all have trouble. Surrender is the key to your victory. But remember, we all have troubles. There might be physical problems. It might be spiritual problems. It might just be weakness, weaknesses. We all have troubles. And what we want you to see is... You're surrendering regardless if you think so or, or not. not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. So yeah. even if you don't surrender to something better, yeah. or something positive or something productive, you have surrendered to a whole nother lifestyle. So either way you're surrendering, what we want you to do is get to surrender upward. Surrender yeah. positively. Change the old negative behavior for something better. It's easy, yeah, because you surrender. <laughs> you surrender one way or another. It's one like way or it's another. like if you're not serving God, then you serving something. <laughs> <laughs> so you you basically surrendered anyway. So it, it, you surrendered to something. But but oh, I need to back up on page thirty two. The thought for the day it says the greatness of a man's power is in the measure of his surrender, and that's Wim Booth. Wim Booth, greatness of a man's power is in the measure of his surrender. Wim Booth is the, is the founder of the Salvation Army. And he says, and he says, you want to, you want to know how great a man or a woman could be? Tell me how much they're willing to surrender. He said, the greatness of a man's power. He says, a man's power is in the measure of how much he's willing to surrender. If you find a man or a woman who is willing to surrender their past bad lifestyle mm -hmm. and want to obtain and maintain a better lifestyle, that's how much you can tell how powerful that man will become. He says, the greatness of a man's power is in the measure of how much that man willing to surrender. Is he willing to surrender to an authority? Is he willing to submit and surrender to God? Is he willing to sur submit and, su and surrender to living uh, a holy life, a righteous life? How much is that man willing to surrender? If you show me how much a man or a woman is willing to surrender, I'll show you how powerful that man or woman can become. Good God. <laughs> oh, man. I get excited. I get excited. I get so excited when I'm reading stuff like that. <laughs> and, and, and let's give that as an example. When my husband went away, um, he would go to, to different rehabs. But he will always say, I'll give up this, but I'm going to hold on to this. <laughs> yeah. yeah and every time that. he held on to something, he ended up going back to the thing he said he was That's giving right. up. Yeah. Sometimes his greatest struggle was even letting go to something small like cigarettes. Yeah. That last last time he said, I give up everything, but I'm gonna hold on to these cigarettes. I'm keeping something. I'm not submitting But that puffing always reminded and made him think about when he was doing something else. True. So he had to <laughs> give up even that and he when he got willing to surrender even that, yeah. it's been on and popping. Yeah. <laughs> Plus I'm so glad the cigarettes is gone. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> But listen, key to, in in the Bible in Job five seven it says, Man is born to trouble as sparks fly upward. That's why I was saying that we all have troubles. Man was born in the troubles, just like sparks fly upward. If you see something that spark, notice how those sparks go. They always go up before they disappear. Mm -hmm. What successful next question? Again, we're talking about surrender, the key to victory. The question next is, what successful outcomes have you had? What successful outcomes have you had? The reason why you need to find some successful outcomes is because they're stepping stones. You might not think they were big. I teach my um, 
clients or wherever I'm teaching that, I always tell them to celebrate even the smallest, smallest. of victories. Celebrate the smallest of victories. I remember years ago, I don't know when I said it, but I remember I came home every night for the whole year. Remember, and I was like, yo, I came home every night this year. And you might think that ain't nothing. But from a person who was staying out, running the streets all his life, coming home, I said, I, remember I said it? I said, I slept in my own bed for a whole year. And that's a small victory, but you got to celebrate even the smallest of victory. Smallest of victory. And that's like, say, go even smaller. If you pack, smoke a pack of cigarettes in two days, and two days went by and you still got a half pack left, that's a small victory. victory. Oh, that scripture that I said, a uh, man is born to trouble, is Job 5 7. <laughs> Kiana. <laughs> Job 5 7 it says a man is born to trouble that's why when you read stuff like that and you see people going through trouble I don't really panic I don't really panic because he said he said he said you born to trouble so when people like yo this trouble is going on I'm sitting there like so why are you so shocked he told you that you was going to be face trouble where can you get the keys to gain the victory? This is another question. I'm just going through the workbook right quick. Where can you get the keys to gain the victory? Everybody has different avenues, a different way to gain keys to gain victories. I gain keys by building on my spiritual foundation. I built off of that. Everything I do, everything we do, we do off of our spiritual foundation. Now, you... Do you need a spiritual foundation to succeed in your recovery walk? Yeah, you do. But you can get keys for victory by looking at another person's life who might not be doing what they used to do before. You have to accumulate those keys. The reason we say you need a spiritual basis, and I'm, I'm going to interject this right here, that we don't discriminate on anything that anyone believes. If you want to worship that mighty head of cabbage, that's what you do. But you make sure that that mighty head of cabbage has some proven facts and some proven um, history that it works. We worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we stand as an example that he works. We're not telling you something we studied or something someone else said. We're, <laughs> we're examples that it works. he works because it was only him that changed our lives and is allowing us to sit here and um, share with you. That's right, because she was a mess. It took God to he fix her. He was a mess. <laughs> it, it was going to only take God to fix that. It was no way no man could fix this chick. But anyway, <laughs> why do you keep losing to this lifestyle? Why do you keep losing to this lifestyle? Listen to me. This lifestyle or the old life that you used to live, it's only a loss, watch this, to those who don't learn from it. The old life that I used to live was only a loss up until I didn't learn from it. Your old lifestyle or the way you used to live is actually your tutor. That's all you need to do is to take stuff from your old lifestyle to tutor you from what not to do. The lifestyle you used to live is only a loss if you don't learn from it. Proof, how can you prove, how can you prove an individual didn't learn from a lifestyle that they keep, uh, that they used to live? And it's by them repeating it. If you keep repeating something that's causing you pain, it's obvious. It's not even, you don't even have, need a rocket science to show you that you haven't learned from And it's it. insanity. Definitely insanity. I, I used to ask him um, when he would go through withdrawal and I would see how sick he would be. And then he would, that would pass because he's made it through. And the next thing I know, I'm going to work and come back. He done went out and did it again. And I'm like, you just see how sick you were? Like, to me, I could not understand that. And, and it's insanity. It's insanity. Okay, let's move on. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. It's an inside job. What's up, Chuck? It's an inside job. Um... Oliver Wendell Holmes, Wendell Holmes, this habit is based on the principle of personal leadership, which means you decide what you want. 
you lead yourself into the direction you choose. There are always two creations of everything that we do. The first is in the creation of our mental. It is in our heads and not yet materialized. That's where you develop an action plan and execute it the best way possible to get the victory. Mm -hmm. The first place it happens is in your mental. You see it in your head. The minor adjustments program was something that I seen in my head first. I sent it in my head. That was the first creation. It was in my mental. Mm -hmm. It didn't materialize until I start putting legs to the things that I seen in my head. The first creation of anything is always a mental. It's a vision. Next week, we're talking about that, too. Mm -hmm. We're talking about vision next week. But today, we're talking about surrendering. And that's true. Tell them because um, how you think can work productively yeah, too. or it can work negatively Both. because if you're thinking about negative things or if you're meditating or thinking of how you can get that next hit that next drink how you can get this money from this person whatever it is how you can get this man away from his wife this wife away from her husband <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, it is you, you constantly think about that over thing. and over and you'll, over <laughs> you'll find a way to make it work you'll put so some legs to, to it to, you sure will <laughs> you mess so around they knock on the door <laughs> Like, who that at the door? That's the person I was thinking about. <laughs> so we're trying to get you to make minor adjustments and yeah, how you Yeah, you got to make minor because adjustments. Because everything we tell you can work in the negative. We're trying yeah. to get you to flip it and work it in the positive. And that's one of the reasons we say you need a spiritual basis. Foundation. Because you need that. Because you need something higher than you, higher than a girl, higher than a man, yeah. higher than your parents, higher than your children. Higher than your job, whatever you you hold of value, you need something higher than that to keep you balanced. Because one day that thing, that natural thing, will make you mad. Some days he make I never make him mad because yeah, I'm innocent. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes yeah, he makes me mad. They know that. They know. He makes me mad, but because <laughs> of my belief in that higher power, my Lord and Jesus, Savior Christ, I don't go all out of the way and do anything that will mess up our relationship. Or mess up my walk with God. Or take me anywhere but backwards. Anywhere but backwards. It says. Okay let me move. I'm on the wrong page. Oh man hold on. Did I forget to. Oh yeah. If you can identify the cause of your problem. The victory will soon be yours. If you can identify the cause of your problem. The victory can soon be yours. Identify it. Point it out. Identify it. All right. I'm about to wrap this thing up. It says the first step to on the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. Listen to me. The first step on the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. Listen to me. I got this from Miles Monroe, the great Miles Monroe. He says it is. It is the most destructive force this world knows. Mm -hmm. It causes war, poverty, poverty, fear, and worry. It also destroys lives of millions of people. Watch this. Its lives, it, it lives, it's deadlier than the devil. It's the number one enemy of life. I'm going to have to go back. It says it is the most destructive force this world knows. It causes war, poverty, fear, and worry. It also destroys the lives of millions of people. It's deadlier than the devil. It's the number one enemy of life. And that word is ignorance. Ignorance, Mr. Miles Monroe said, is deadlier than the devil. And in the Bible, in, in, in Hosea 4, 6, it says people... People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ignorance is deadlier than the devil. And the reason why I brought that word up in dealing with surrender, because if an individual is ignorant to the lifestyle, sucking him up and killing them and causing them all these types of problems, if they're ignorant to that, that sucker is deadlier than the devil because you have to realize that you have to surrender one lifestyle in order to do it. In order to do it, you have to surrender. And don't tell me you can't surrender because you can. I know when my husband was doing whatever he was doing out there in them streets, guess what? 
when them cops got him, guess what he did? He surrendered. Yeah. And guess what he did? He surrendered that lifestyle he was out there <laughs> on the streets to a lifestyle behind to a lifestyle behind bars. Yeah. And when he got out, he had the choice to pick. So you <coughs> can surrender. It is possible. All right. Maybe you've been convinced that you can keep doing what you do and still keep things together. Sometimes it can be done now for a while, depending on the person. But by the time where you were forced to surrender, but by that time, you'll be forced to surrender. Maybe you've been convinced that you can keep doing what you do and still keep things together. Sometimes it can be done for a while, depending on the person. But by the time everything adds up, you will be forced to surrender. Again, we, we, uh, my name is Michael Mickey Williams Jr. And this is my beautiful wife, Linnell. And we do the Minor Adjustments Program every eight weeks. We try to, we're going to go through and do um, a subject at the Minor Adjustments book. Next week, we will be doing Always Visualize Vertically, talking about vision at 6 o'clock Friday, next Friday. And again, Minor Adjustments is dedicated to preventing and reducing crime. And our primary purpose is to teach men or women how to make the minor adjustments that are necessary in their lives, which will allow them to obtain and maintain a productive lifestyle after incarceration and or rehabilitation. Our motto is is anywhere, anywhere but, but backwards. backwards and i came from a scripture it's jeremiah 7 24 and it says yet they did not obey and incline their ear to me but they followed the counsel and the dictates of their evil hearts and they kept going backwards and not forward and our motto is anywhere, anywhere but, but backwards. backwards god bless y'all oh baby smell good yeah whatever